Welcome to Love Them Knives. This is LTK coming your way today. What do we got? We've got Rake. No, it's not R-A-K-E. We've done this, haven't we? We've been through the name. I mean, I swear to God. Call it Frank. Bob. Whatever. I don't know. Rocket. Something. Looks like a little rocket. There he is. Rake. I, I was calling him Reek, Rook. I mean, I've heard it pronounced by different reviewers like different ways. We're, I think we're settling on Rake. <sighs> this is a good looking knife here. The Rake knives are made in China. It's a Chinese knife company. Boy, their stuff really seems awful much like another knife company that I will hopefully show you god if i didn't bring that sucker i will kill myself here we go like real steel they just seem so familiar god really really i don't even think i've touched this damn knife ah uh, the blade okay so this is obviously a satin grind this is obviously not but i mean this and this is g10 and stuff i'm just saying that i mean you know they just seem so familiar i, I don't know why but they do and also I, I it, it just seems like the action, the feel, um, and the quality is really good. And you know what I'm going to do? Yeah, get that off of there. Now, this particular model is not perfectly lined up. You can see it's not centered. It's not perfectly centered. It's a little bit off, which is surprise, surprise, because... Here's the, its brother in satin, and I will leave the tag onto this one. It's probably going to go in a knife seal, so I'll leave it sat. Black G10 spacer, black G10 back spacer, but this is the 128 in the satin. And the reason I'm putting this one up, because I think I've done this one before, is because this is in a black wash. This is new out in the market, so it's really cool because of... For you guys that really like this harpoon blade and the steel handle like this, but go, man, wouldn't it be cool if it was really darked out, blacked out? Well, there you go. Now, let me check this one real quick before I let you go. Yeah, that one's centered up like a dog. I'll tell you what, I may have, I may have messed with this one. I may have put my torques on here. I think I did, but I think I was trying to figure out if it had any blade play. Um, I can't remember what else I was doing with it, but yeah, so, but you know what? I think I tried to center this out better, but then I, I put too much pressure on here and I, I hurt the action on it a bit. So I decided no, it ain't touching or anything. It's not that bad. So I was going to leave it alone. It's really hard to see through there cause you got a backspacer and it's all black, but you can see the tip. It's just favors the top a bit. I mean, you could push this that much see and it's center so i mean it's not far off in any case really like these knives <sighs> really do uh they flip really well they got bearings they're a budget price type knife they run around oh around 50 bucks something like that so they're not terribly expensive and you get the sandvik steel 14c 28n so that was a redesigned steel that uh kershaw Asked to have made and uh, to make it even more corrosion resistant. And I don't know, you'd have to, <laughs> you'll have to do some metallurgy study if you want to see the difference between the old Sandvik and, the, and this different formula, uh, how that changes with maybe the vanadium or chromium or whatever that they added more of. P128 SB. So stonewash black. And then all these numbers that mean nothing to me. And just their name here. And I don't know what this little thing here means. I've never really paid much attention to it. But in any case, so Sandvik Steel, bearings, this is a frame lock flipper. And another thing that I don't mind terribly on these knives, in fact, I'm kind of getting to like, is this lock out here. It's not like the roto lock on the lion steel that some kinds can rotate on its own and then you go to close the knife and it's and it's rotated to to, to locking it out and you got to undo the damn roto lock with your thumb. 
this engages here or disengages there. So you can just leave it off if you want, okay? And if you think you're going to do some pretty tough stuff and you really want to just double make sure that won't disengage, then you can just engage that. That's nice, huh? Okay, so... Yeah, a little over three, right at three and a half inch blade. And eight, almost eight and a half overall, 21 and a half centimeters, um, 94 millimeters if you want to really get right down to the gnat on it. But, you know, so it's a three and a half inch blade to here. Down here, it's longer. I mean, you know, if you just put a ruler down from here to here, that's going to be longer than three and a half inches, more like three, five eighths and whatever. So it's a good size knife. Not bad at all. Oh, well, let's pull out some comparatives. How about Mr. Mannix? What do you think? Which one's bigger now, buddy? Yeah. Mannix, not such a big man. You tried to take on my Hogue X1? Yes, it's a micro flip. You're bigger. But now you're not the big man anymore. How about that? That's something. That's something. So how about the para? Hollywood's got to get out here for his appearance. And sorry, Hollywood. You're not quite making the grade either. You're not the big boy. Um, yeah. Got a long handle, though. He tries to make up for it in the handle length, doesn't he? Pivot to pivot, it's it's still a bigger knife. The rake is. Wow. But it's a lot heavier. I mean, you got a steel handle on this thing. I, you know, I, I go back and forth about steel handles. First of all, they're not like titanium because they're heavier, but I think they'll take a lot more abuse. I mean, titanium, you just get those snail trails and stuff in there, and it's no bueno. Let's do it left-handed. Oh, yeah, not a problem. Okay, so what do we got? Mm, 0.133, so that's 3.3 mm, millimeter blade stock. Okay, 3.4 almost, or... And not quite 12 uh, millimeters, 0.46, so it's fairly slender, actually. Um, blade stock's not real, real thick, but it's thicker than a lot of them out there. So about almost 3.4 millimeter blade stock. Let's see what it weighs. That's the real, that's the real tail of the tape, isn't it? Okay, 5.6. Not too bad. I was almost afraid it'd be right at or a little above six because, you know, that's a steel handle. 159 grams, so it's not that horrible. I mean, 5.6, obviously, this is like 3.8. So, see what I'm saying? This, well, that's crazy. This is like 2.8. But, no, that's not, that's not too bad. Well, let's have a little gander inside. Let's see if they've done some magic in here. Yeah, they have, haven't they? They've cut away on the insides of the scales to reduce the... Is that cheating? I think that's cheating, right? <laughs> uh, it's a good idea. It's a great idea. Keep the weight down. I, I figured this thing would be 6.62, six, something like that as far as ounces. But no, they skeletonized it out a bit. So I like the action. I mean, you don't have a hydraulic type drop on this thing, you know, but the detent is pretty decent. See this flipper tab? It's not real tall, but it's easy to grab where it's at and it really deploys well. See, feel that detent kick. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty decent. On my detent scale, wow. Um, I think it's 
somewhere between a six and a seven. Um, I wouldn't even try and really gravity flip this. Now, um, now I, it probably closer to a seven. So that's, that's pretty good. Well, let's take his brother. Now, this is a little, this is a little less. Isn't that strange? How they would change between two of the same? Well, I still can't gravity flip this one. Oh, no. Okay, never mind. Uh, no, nah, but this is more like a... This is more like a six. You know? This is more like a seven. Now, maybe this whole thing got blackwashed. There's a little bit of something there that's causing some additional drag. Uh, maybe. Now, let's do something else. Let's get a piece of paper, see if we can cut something. Okay, it's pretty sharp, right out of the box. And these, I like, you know what I like about these boxes? Check them out. There, there's one thing I don't like about them, see that? Well, this is, I'm sorry, this is the outer box. The inner box is, is there's no cutouts. There used to be in some of the older ones. So you got to shake it down to get, to get it loose and pull it open. And it's a pain in the ass. Cross. I don't like the way that does that. But there it is. It's just form fitting. It goes in there. There's your paperwork and stuff. And the good thing about this packaging though, and here's your, they put it on the end because you got this outer cover. And there's your model number. Um, but what I was going to say about the packaging, the good thing is you got this outer cover for like shelfware and things. Of course, Phoenix. Yeah, I forgot to say about the Phoenix lights. You know, this is that division. These are the people that make these knives or that have them made, whatever. You know, that's been <laughs> discussed about uh, does Real Steel make these knives? Who's the outsource? Because it's hard to believe that Phoenix, which does lights, flashlights, um, is going to build a factory and a total facility from scratch to do a line of knives. So I'm thinking they're outsourcing them. I think most people think they outsource them. Where they do that to, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but I mean, uh, people have been pondering the fact that it might be real steel because real steel has a lot of knives like this that are metal uh, and uh, that kind of thing. And, you know, um, Rake also has G10 knives that are liner lock that feel a lot like this. I don't think the bearings are the same. And you know what? I think I've taken one of the apart. I don't, I don't think they're needle bearings. Uh, these are. But in any case, really good action node. They're sharp out of the box. The quality's really strong. Like the little lockout thing. You know, pocket clip's pretty solid here. You got two screws holding it in place and it's also recessed in here. It's not going to move. But it's comfortable in the pocket. It, this does go in the pocket pretty easy. Because I know, because I, I had one of these. <laughs> before. I think I sold it off to a guy that just wanted one so bad. In any case, and now I got another, which will probably go on the sit table sale. But in any case, a, a, but I've carried the previous one I had a couple times. But yeah. I mean, you got a lanyard hole here. No access to your screws here. Or here, so you know you're going to take it apart from the backside, which is, I kind of like that actually. Um, you know, it kind of just tells you this is the way you're going to take it apart. Other knives, sometimes they'll have access front and back, and then you go, okay, so where is the pivot pin going through from the presentation side or from this side? Which one's the screw? Which one's the, the tube? You know, so this one is just going to tell like that good good design you know it's comfortable in the hand too really is and to disengage yeah it's not difficult at all 
to get your hand, uh, your thumb on that lock bar. It's raised up and it's got texturing there. Separate it away. Not a problem. Not a problem. Good action. I mean, not, it's not like glassy. It's more like a, because of the detent so strong, it's more like a snappy flipper than one of those just swings out, smooth type swinging gate. This is more like bang, which, you know, just depends on what you like in the action of a knife. I like them both, actually. It just depends on the, on the knife. But, you know, it's sharp. It's a good size knife. Reverse grip is very comfortable as well. Of course, you've got the nice finger choil here. And, you know, you got the flipper tab that comes down as a guard. Of course, when you got a flipper knife, you know, as I tell you, here's your, here's your engagement here. But, well, yeah. Obviously, that's just part of the design. Harpoon blade, good for piercing. And eh, not too fragile on the tip. I've seen worse. Um, yeah, it's pretty sturdy. No lock rock. No blade play, but yeah, the, you know, of course, I've already had a wrench in here. So, no. But... Yeah, this this was a little out of round, wasn't it? You know, just off center a little bit. Kind of weird. Uh, this is the first one I've had that, that was like that. It's really strange. Usually they're just spot on when they come out. But that lockup is whoo, big time, isn't it? Like well over 50%. Good solid lockup. Of course, you don't have lock bar insert because this is steel on steel. Nice. All right, guys, I'm going to let you go. I like these rake knives. I really do. I think they're really good quality. They remind me so much of the real steel knives. They really do. And, you know, the, the incredible thing about these knives, and I'll throw this one out in the picture too, because uh, this is always an option. I really do prefer the all satin. They're a little bit more showy, but uh, I just like the cleaner look. I don't, I'm not a big blacked out. But there are times when a black blade works for me. I really like, but in any case, these Asian uh, bargain, not a bargain uh, budget, uh, lower cost, I don't know what to call them, uh, knives are just amazingly amazing. I, I, they just are. I mean, they are just such a great bargain. They're really, really going to be you know, a pain in the butt for people like, you know, CRKT to compete with in that price range. And even, you know, some of the other brands that have lower cost knives, they're going to come in and, you know, the Kershaw thing too, right? Um, yeah, this, this is really coming into the market, this and real steel and even the steel, steel wheel cut jack knife uh, that's made in China as well. I mean, these are incredibly attractive alternatives. So it's got to be, well, it's a win-win for the consumer. I'm not sure about the other knife companies that are more established in the U.S. that are watching these come in and they're being distributed in the U.S. by U.S. distributors and sold by U.S. retailers. You know, so you have a problem, you can return it, you know, that kind of thing. At least you could do that. Service, I wouldn't expect you'd get much, although these are budget type knives. So, you know, but they're so well made, you probably won't ever have a problem. Just saying. All right, I'm going to let you go. Sorry I took so much of your time, but wow. Like the rake knives, really do. This won't be the last you hear from me on the rake knives. I've got other models coming that are intriguing and I've heard good things about. So I really wanted to get my hands on them and just kind of see. And I, there's just a lot of fun in pursuing some of these more budget oriented knives. I mean, exotic materials and high prices and stuff. Yeah, I get it. And I like the show and the glitz too. I do. But there's just something so delightful about a really good quality knife that's not very expensive. And it's just 
fun. I mean, it's just fun getting them in your hands and going, oh my God, these are really good. You know, and you start laughing, you go, wow, I mean, this is great. It just keeps getting better. Thank you so much for joining me. Subscribe if you'd like. We're just going to keep going crazy, doing different types of knives. And we do a lot of budget stuff here, but we do, you know, we do some of the more expensive knives here and there. Don't want to stay too, too, you know, down grounded. We like to change it up. Thank you for joining me. You know what we do here. We love them knives, so stay sharp.